So I've hit that actual point on my storage bill where it starts to annoy me. I pay hundreds, if not even thousands of euros each year to rent space on someone else's servers like Google Drive, Dropbox, iCloud. And every month it's kind of the same. Like, do I need to delete this? Do I need to delete that? Just to kind of stay on the limit of what I possibly can or what I'm allowed to do before needing to go up another tier in storage and pay even more. So in this video, I want to show you what I'm switching to instead, and that is this little box. This is the Ugreen NOS DH4300 Plus, and where I think something like this makes a lot of sense if you're a creator or you just have too many photos, videos, and project files lying around. So I will walk you through what this thing actually is in normal language, why I'm moving footage of subscription clouds to this, and I'll also touch a little bit on the Ugreen NOS DH2300 if you don't need a full prosumer setup. And yes, Ugreen is actually available on Amazon and the Ugreen web store. So don't forget to check out the links in the description. So what is this? Well, I'll run through it quickly. The DH4300 Plus is basically your own private cloud server. This is a four bay NAS, so you can put up to four hard drives in. Max capacity is up to 120 terabytes with 30 terabyte drives, which is absurd. 41 million photos if they're 3 megabit each or roughly 125 million files if they're about 1 megabyte each. Or to put it into us as filmmakers, it is around 80,000 1.5 gigabyte films if you look at Ugreen's own numbers and I think it kind of adds up if you're not doing like a ProRes video kind of situation but then they're not going to be 1.5 gigabytes are they? And inside you got an 8 core RM CPU with 8 gigabytes of RAM. And the operating system lives on its own 32 gigabyte EMMC chip. So your drives are just for data and not for running the OS, which is kind of neat. On the network side, there's a 2.5 gigabit. So you get fast network that you can move 1 gigabyte in around 3 seconds. That's the claim, which is a really good upgrade over previously 1 gigabyte setups. And as you can see physically, it's a small vertical box, four drives from in top, one big fan pulling air from the bottom, and then you got front USB-C and rear USB-A plus HDMI for attaching accessories or using it as a little media box. So think of it as a small low power computer whose only job is to safely store your files and to share them to all your devices and the friends you let into your NAS server. So why did I want a NAS? Well, let's talk about the money part for a second. If you're a creator, this probably sounds kind of familiar. You got footage in Dropbox, you got footage in Google Drive, backups in Dropbox, phone photos in iCloud, and then some random, you know, if we just look here, this one, random SSD drives on your desktop, just, you know, cluttering everything. You're paying subscription fees and your files are scattered everywhere. I mean, sometimes you have a client that's gonna be on your Dropbox or your OneDrive, or your Google Drive, and then you kind of need to remember, okay, this customer is there, this customer is there. And I mean, I may not be the most structured person, but when it comes to files, I'm pretty good at that. And I still have issues sometimes to kind of, okay, where should I look for this? Or where will this be? And if we take a simple example from one of the other reviews that I've watched, I read that 10 terabytes of cloud storage on Google is about $50 a month. Over two years, that's a thousand euro. And when you stop paying, you own nothing. So you're just renting space. And when it comes to the DH4300 plus, you pay once, you pay for the enclosure once, and then you pay for the drives. And obviously, depending on the size of the drives you buy, you might have to upgrade them, but I mean, Right now I have four times four terabytes, which means I have 16 terabytes in here. And that's a really cheap buy in terms of drives. And I mean, I own this storage indefinitely, you know, no monthly fees. If I fill it up, like I said, I can replace the drives or add another NAS, but it's not like I'm on this kind of, you know, hamster wheel spinning on someone else's subscription cloud. So for me, that's a really nice thing. And I also have a little bit more security over where my files actually are. Like they won't be leaked, they won't be uh, lost. You know, there can be a, a data crash or a server crash anywhere. Obviously it can be a failure on a disk as well, but it's a lot more secure. So for me, that's the big shift. I can still use the cloud as like a backup where I can't really access my files on a daily basis. You know, I upload a backup and then I can download if something happens. So it's not my primary home for everything. Uh, so let's actually go through how the setup looks like and what you need to do. Uh, because if it's a pain, nobody's gonna use it. And I mean, 
when you want to start using it, you pop off the top cover, slide out the caddy, screen your drives, and then slide them back. So it's not 100% toolless, but all you need is literally one little screwdriver and that was actually in the package. So it's super easy to get it all fitted and mounted. And also if you have a 2.5 or 3.5 SATA drive, they actually show you in the description how to do it. So it's pretty much bulletproof. And then you plug in power, you plug in ethernet to your router and then kind of you're done. And when it comes to installing the Juji OS, which is Ugreen's operating system, you can download the Ugreen NAS app or connect via browser. So you can do it in a browser. You can download the app for your iOS, which is a super nice function. And the first time you set it up, you have a walkthrough. So you create an admin, you choose kind of what RAID. And for you people that don't know what RAID is, you can actually create a RAID. So both disks are mirroring each other. So if one disk fails, you still have the second disk intact with the same. So that would effectively give you half the space, but you have a redundancy if something were to happen. Uh, you update firmware, all that boring stuff, but it, it's pretty easy. There is also an NFC tag on the front. If you tap your phone to it, it opens the app and you can bind your device automatically. So it's, you know, nice little quality of life thing. And like I said, you can access this from iOS, Android, uh, Mac, Windows, or a regular web browser if you just need to get something really quick. And with that said, the interface is consistent. It looks the same pretty much in the phone, in the iPad, in the browser, or in the app for Mac, which I am running. It's really easy because it's, you know, not one world on the phone and another world on the computer, which is always a plus. Performance wise, for a value NAS, these specs are pretty serious. The 8 core Rockship CPU with 8GB RAM is a lot beefier than many competing 4 bay ARM NASes in the same price range. Over 2.5 gigabit, reviewers have been seeing around. 300 plus megabyte, which lines up with Ugreen's one gigabyte in three seconds marketing. So obviously your network and drives kind of matter. In terms of noise and power, so with a typical four drive NAS, people usually measure around high 30 decibels and low 40s on the load. So it's basically a low hum in a quiet room. Power draw and idle with drives is around low 20 watts and peaks in the mid 30s under heavy load. So it's really good for a box that's meant to run 24 seven. So for me, that literally means I can just stick it over there in the corner and let it run all day. And I don't really need to think about electricity bill or the noise because I've had it running now for, you know, a week and I've not once been bothered or actually thought about it. My light that I have over here lighting on me is actually louder than the NAS. So there's a lot of features in this and I'm going to focus on the creator side of things, the things that makes a difference for me in my day to day. And I'd say it's storage headroom. Like I said before, up to 120 terabytes with, you know, different kind of raids. I have 16 in now, but you can start with three or four drives, RAID five or six. You lose one drive's worth of capacity to redundancy, but you'll get protection against, you know, drive die-in. One thing that I like is I can create separate folders for my clients so I can have a portal for like the fascia clinics. I can have a portal for a sim lab. So editors, clients, family, they can all get to different stuff, but they can't see what's else on the disk. You can share folders or single links with access control. And you also have, you know, when people ask to get into your NAS, you have to accept that they're applying to your server and you can let people connect from phone, tablet, laptop, everywhere. So if I'm on a shoot, I can put all the files on the NAS when I get home in the evening and then someone can start pulling selects from the laptop at the same time like not more like oh i'll upload it during the night and then you can so people can literally just you know you drop it and then it's going to keep uploading and then someone can just you know load it down the same day and at a good speed and what i really like is also i have a lot of failed downloads when it comes to WeTransfer or dropbox because just cuts out for some weird reason sometimes. So here it is super stable. One thing that I'm not using, at least not yet, because I'm still pretty new with this, it is that it's got an AI photo album assistant with face recognition, objects, location tagging, it can also help you find duplicates to clean up your photos. That runs locally on the box. It's using MPU up to six tops. So you're not sending your whole life to someone else's server for analysis, which is also pretty nice. So everything is happening inside of this little thing. And like I said, with the security, if you're storing client footage or personal stuff, this part is important. Ugreen has TIFF, Etsy, EN, 303, 645 and Trust E certifications for privacy. 
I had to read that on the screen because that's something that's really hard to remember. You can enable two-factor authentication. And of course, like I said, you can have RAID for redundancy and you can have snapshots for versioning. So if you're not familiar with snapshots and stuff, that might not be applicable to you, but there is a possibility for you who's watching this video and want to do that. But for me, why I really wanted a NAS and like what's my main reason that is to clean up the cloud. Like I want to kind of centralize my storage so I can dump camera cards straight to the NAS instead of Google Drive or Dropbox. So I can have this mirrored to an external drive. So if I want to edit from it, I can edit it super fast, which is a really nice function. How I usually do it is like, I have all these SSDs that are really fast, like NVMe disks in enclosures, and that's my editing drives. And when I'm done with a project, I will archive it on the NAS and then remove it from the cloud. Photo library, my phone can actually auto upload, which is nice. I do have it to iCloud, but it's nice to have it somewhere local as well. And another thing is like really important or shared stuff still goes to the cloud, but it's synced from the NAS, not stored only in the cloud. So it's still available for people on my cloud and maybe on Dropbox for a little while, but it's also stored here. So if something were to happen, so instead of like paying to expand Google Drive, I'm thinking the opposite, pull stuff down from the cloud, put it in the NAS and use cloud only as a thin layer on top. And like I said, there is, this is the DH4300 plus, and then you have the DH2300 plus, and it's basically the little sister. If we just position these two, this one, the 4300, four base up to 120 terabytes. It's got the Rockchip eight core C uh, CPU with eight gigabytes of RAM, it's got 2.5 gigabyte ethernet, uh, more RAID options, you have 0, 1, 5, 6, 10, and it's better suited for creators and people working professionally or with heavier workloads. Then if we take the 2300, it has two base, so it's up to 60 terabytes, so still a lot of storage. Also an 8-core RM CPU, but it has 4 gigabytes of RAM, so half the RAM. It's got a 1 gigabyte Ethernet network, and it's only RAID 0 or RAID 1. It's lower power. It's cheaper, more like home user, personal, personal cloud vibes. So the way I'd frame it is if you're a single user who just wants to escape cloud subscriptions, backup phones and laptops, you know, stream some media, then DH2300 is probably the way to go. But if you're a creator or a small team dealing with big video products, multiple files, and you want more speed and safety redundancy, the 4300 plus is the better, more prosumer choice. This obviously wouldn't be my video if I only did all of the positives. There's also a few things you need to consider. It is still an ARM NAS. That means no heavy virtual machine for 1080p and 4K streaming. At home, it's perfect. It's super fine. It's fast. You can stream to your phone easily. Just don't expect it to be a full-blown server farm. So it only has a 2.5 gigabit Ethernet port. So no link aggregation failover for most home and small studios. That's not a big deal. But if you want to dual NIC setups, you'll need to look at the higher end DXP line from Ugreen. The app ecosystem is still growing. UGOS has the essentials, backups, multimedia, Docker, snapshots, but it's not as mature still as the Synology DSM or QNAP. If you live inside super niche apps, check the compatibility first. But for what I want, reliable storage, easy access, and a way to stop bleeding money to the cloud, this is perfectly fine for what I need. So one thing that I didn't mention yet is the pricing. It is around 400 euros for the enclosure and then the price of whatever drives you want to put in. So who is the DH4300 for? I would say if you pay too much for cloud storage, you have footage split between five services and three SSDs, and you kind of want one place to put everything that you actually own, then this is perfect for you. You will get up to 120 terabytes of storage. Good performance for backups, media, and everyday creator workflows, like I spoke on earlier in the video. Multi-user sharing for small team, family, or like I said before, clients. You have proper security features like two-factor authentication and RAID for redundancy. And you pay once instead of every month. So even though that this enclosure is around 400, I roughly pay 80 euros a month for Dropbox and Google Drive. So you can kind of see already in like three, four months, I would see my money in my wallet instead of you know just bleeding every month and if that is a bit overkill for you i would have a look at the 2300 instead also from ugreen and that is perfect if you just want it for home family sharing phone backups laptop backups you know it is the same idea as just a little bit smaller 
So I'd say that that's it for now. And like I said, it's around 400 euros at the moment of this video. But if you're curious about pricing, you want to check around current deals, Ugreen NAS is also, like I said, available on Amazon and the Ugreen webshop. And as I said before, links are in the description. So let me know in the comments, are you still all in on Google Drive, Dropbox, OneDrive and all of those things? Or do you already have a NAS at home or running in the office? And if so, what made you switch? And as always, if you find this content helpful, don't forget to like and subscribe and leave a comment because that helps the channel tremendously. So yeah, have a good one. Bye.